The 8th of April, 1945, about five miles northwest of the city of Weimar, Nazi Germany. Buchenwald camp prisoners, using a secret shortwave transmitter and small generator, send the Morse code message to the Allies, to the Army of General Patton. This is the Buchenwald concentration camp, SOS. We request help. They want to evacuate us. The SS want to destroy us. Three minutes after the transmission, desperate prisoners receive the message, Hold out, rushing to your aid, staff of 3rd Army. Three days later, on the 11th of April, the US 6th Armor Division liberates Buchenwald and finds more than 21,000 survivors who are weak and emaciated. After General Patton tours the camp, he orders the mayor of the nearby city of Weimar to bring 1,000 citizens to Buchenwald to be shown the crematorium and other evidence of Nazi atrocities. The Americans want to ensure that the German people take responsibility for Nazi crimes instead of dismissing them as atrocity propaganda. Many of them cry, and some even faint, after seeing the dead bodies, starved survivors behind barbed wire fences, as well as a table displaying paintings on human skins, various parts of the human body preserved in alcohol, and two heads which were shrunk to one-fifth of their normal size. One of the most infamous perpetrators of the criminal Nazi regime responsible for these atrocities is Hermann Hackmann. Hermann Hackmann was born on the 11th of November 1913 in Osnabrück, then part of the German Empire. Hackmann was the son of a construction foreman, and after leaving school in 1930, he began an apprenticeship as a bricklayer. On the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany by President Paul von Hindenburg. In November of the same year, Hackmann became a member of the SS. As of 1934, he served in the Esterwergen concentration camp, located near the German-Dutch border. Most of the prisoners in Esterwergen were political prisoners, many of them communists. The most famous was Karl von Ossietzky, a German journalist and political activist who was sent to Esterwergen in 1933. After Esterwagen was closed in the summer of 1936, Hackmann was transferred to Sachsenhausen concentration camp, where he was deployed as a block leader. Later, he became a report leader, and he was mainly responsible for compiling prisoner strength reports, the administration of the prisoner registry office, and overseeing and administering camp punishments. In 1937, Hackmann was transferred to the newly established Buchenwald concentration camp. The camp's commandant was Karl Otto Koch and his wife Ilse, who belonged to the camp personnel, was nicknamed for her cruelty towards the prisoners as the Beast of Buchenwald. Buchenwald was one of the largest concentration camps established within German borders. Prisoners lived in the Buchenwald main camp, which was surrounded by an electrified barbed wire fence, watchtowers, and a chain of sentries outfitted with automatic machine guns. At the entrance to the main camp, there was a notorious punishment block known as the Bunker, where prisoners who violated the camp regulations were punished and often tortured to death. In addition to the punishment block, the main camp included 33 wooden barracks, disinfection buildings, a brothel, and a crematorium. Most of the early inmates at Buchenwald were political prisoners, people who had been arrested for some form of political opposition to the Nazi regime. In addition to the political prisoners and Jews, Buchenwald prisoners also included repeat offenders, Jehovah's Witnesses, Sinti and Roma people, and German military deserters. Hackmann first started at Buchenwald as a report leader, and in the spring of 1939, he became an adjutant to the camp commandant, Karl Otto Koch. Hermann Hackmann was a twisted sadist, who inclined to aggression. He was known in Buchenwald by the nickname Johnny, and was always present when any official beating took place. After the war, one Holocaust survivor testified how Hackmann had mistreated inmates during roll calls. He would kick them and beat them with a stick or whip for no reason. On one occasion, he struck an inmate in the back of the head with his fist, knocking the victim against a wall, causing him to bleed. One month after Germany invaded Benelux and France, in May 1940, Hackmann severely beat Dutch and Belgian inmates with a leather whip, about 1.2 meters long, which he always carried. Hackmann was a depraved torturer, who subjected his victims to excruciating pain, reveling in their suffering. He would often make inmates kneel, and then kick them with full force in the testicles. 
There was a rule against spitting on the camp road, and when Huckman saw someone spit on the ground, he forced the nearest inmate to lick it up. Huckman also used creative ways to torture prisoners. Once he made two block leaders bend down a birch tree and made a Jewish inmate hold on to it. Then the block leaders released the tree, and the inmate was catapulted into the stone quarry. In August 1941, Hackmann became Koch's deputy in the construction of the Majdanek concentration camp, located near the city of Lublin, in German-occupied Poland. He held the post of protective custody camp commander, and he was responsible for the overall operations of the camp. Additionally, he became the officer in charge of prisoner employment, and he held both positions till September 1942. Whilst at Majdanek, he was responsible for the execution of Soviet prisoners of war. Hackmann was subsequently punished on suspicions of wrongdoing and sent to the front. He was part of the 7th SS Volunteer Mountain Division Prince Eugen, a mountain infantry division of the Waffen-SS, which was the military branch of the SS. In August 1943, Hackmann was arrested for misappropriation of property and murder at Buchenwald concentration camp. He became the subject of a larger investigation, which had been initiated already in 1941 when Buchenwald caught the attention of Josias Waldeck, the higher SS and police leader for Weimar, who in his position had supervisory authority over Buchenwald concentration camp. When it was revealed that the Kochs had used the massive Nazi apparatus to gain an enormous amount of wealth, their downfall became inevitable, as all the possessions stolen from murdered Jews was regarded as property of the Reich. While Ilse was acquitted for lack of evidence, Karl Otto Koch was executed by firing squad on the 5th of April 1945. Following the investigation, Hackmann was sentenced to death by an SS court in June 1944. His execution, however, was postponed until after the war, and as a result, he was held in the SS and police prison camp at Dachau until March 1945, when he managed to escape. On the 11th of April 1945, the US 6th Armored Division liberated Buchenwald camp, the place of Hackmann's atrocities, and found more than 21,000 survivors, who were weak and emaciated. During the camp's existence, the SS imprisoned some 250,000 persons from all countries of Europe in Buchenwald and murdered at least 56,000 male prisoners. Some 11,000 of them were Jews. After the war, Hackmann was captured by the Allies, and alongside 30 other defendants, was prosecuted at the Buchenwald trial, which began on the 11th of April 1947. During the trial, Hackmann rejected all the accusations and insisted he did not beat or whip any inmates. In August 1947, the US military tribunal sentenced Hackmann to death by hanging, but in 1950, his sentence was further reduced to 25 years in prison, and he was eventually paroled in 1955. Upon his release from prison, he worked as a salesman for a furniture company in Uslar, West Germany, until his retirement in 1976. The same year that he retired, Hackmann was arrested by West German authorities and subsequently tried at the Third Majdanek trial. On the 30th of June 1981, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison for his part in the killing of at least 141 prisoners at Majdanek concentration camp, although the prosecutor demanded a life sentence for him. When Hackmann died on the 20th of August 1944 in Uslar, he was 80 years old. There were no tears shed for Hermann Hackmann. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.